play a really quick uh, recording for you. Okay. And, and so, I guess I don't understand. I have infections, and, and you're telling me that on Lyme disease, there's no... Good day, Senators. I'm Dive Girl Deb, a.k.a. Deb Elder. Our doctors don't treat for Lyme disease here. That's our choice. I appreciate you hearing my recorded call to Peace Health. You just heard a snippet of. I hope it helped you to realize the urgent nature of this dire situation. Our Oregon MD and MPs are afraid of board sanctions and have adopted this position. Patients are truly in an emergency medical, emotional, and financial situation. I have been experiencing symptoms of Lyme disease since 1984. In 91, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I've been fed over 63 pharmaceuticals by 39 doctors to mask my symptoms. I was assigned to a chronic pain center where I was given outrageous amounts of pills, 22 oxycodone a day for five years, followed by 12 years of methadone. I couldn't take the array of facts any longer. I attempted to commit suicide in 2004. My father had to call 911 to revive and rescue me. I currently have degeneration in my lumbar disc, residual damage from the untreated Lyme infection. I was given a spinal fusion to stabilize me, which cost over $100,000. In December 2012, I crashed. My body couldn't hold up any longer. I spent the next 16 months bed bound. I paid out of pocket for my Agenics laboratory testing, which finally gave me a diagnosis of Lyme disease and Babesia, a co-infection of Lyme disease. I have Babesia WA1 Ducani, the West Coast version. With 17 species of Babesia, patients are frequently given false negative results. I can't prove my infection strains under the current narrow Oregon medical criteria. All of my infection medical care to date has been paid out of pocket at $500 a month from my disability funds. Babesia is a parasite of the red blood cell. Much like malaria, Babesia is life-threatening. My entry to Babesia is the cause of Lyme carditis. This infection caused my cardiac events, which sent me to the hospital six times in 2013. And as of today, my infection has not been treated. Please listen to my recorded call again when you get back to your office. Peace Health is the infectious disease group for all of Lane County. I visited with Dr. Ormosher mid-2013. She and her eight-minute appointment told me there was nothing she could do to help me and sent me away. I tried again with a new ID doctor referral, and that's the call you've heard. Oregon has squirreled away tens of thousands of sick patients, most under symptomology names like fibromyalgia, MS, chronic fatigue, Alzheimer's, depression, and others. Oregon simply can't fail, afford a failure to treat policy. We do have one in Oregon. It's harming our citizens and our state. Please pass this bill as, as, as it's written. Thank you so much. My, na <clears throat> My name is Dylan King. I was diagnosed with Lyme disease in 2011. I come from Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, an area highly endemic for Lyme disease. The past four years have been an unimaginable nightmare. Before I was diagnosed with Lyme, I was an, uh, a very active father of two and um, heavily involved in residential drywall. I worked 50 to 70, 70 hours every week and also had a janitorial business on the side. I was the hardest worker most of my friends knew. Previous to 2011, I felt relatively healthy. Unbeknownst to me, I apparently had an incubating or non-symptomatic Lyme infection in the background that was causing fatigue and some extra shakiness, nerving, nervousness that I had just shrugged off. I had been bit, bit by ticks tons of times because of my active lifestyle and also had a family pet that would bring them inside. My dog Ruben was diagnosed with Lyme went blind from it and sub subsequently died. So I was healthy until 2011, when I had a routine surgery. After having that corrected, I went back to work, and after uh, about a month off my feet, I went back to work as normal, uh, doing drywall. Six months later, I couldn't walk more than 10 feet without a wheelchair, and couldn't do stairs at all. Uh, the pain in my legs and the whole lower half of my body was that bad. I was having severe migraine, <coughs> severe pain in both legs, and terrible pain in my groin and abdomen. I went from doctor to doctor and hundreds of physical therapy appointments trying to get a handle on things. 
my family doctor vowed to get to the bottom of it, and after running a bunch of tests and doing research, she diagnosed me clinically with Lyme disease. This is uh, in Lehigh Valley Hospital back in Pennsylvania. I tested positive for Akatsia, which is another tick-borne infection, and CDC negative for Lyme disease, but had Lyme-specific bands on the western blot that would have uh, probably shown me positive before Lyme was politicized uh, in the early 90s. After I started getting treated, things got much, much worse. I now needed a wheelchair in the house and spent most of my days in the bathtub or in bed. Since then, it's been ups and downs of severe pain, fatigue, decreased quality of life. I'm now divorced and st after 11 years of marriage and still seeing no light at the end of the tunnel. I'm a 32-year-old uh, father of two. Uh, my name is John Bruce. Bring the microphone closer to you. Uh, thank you, committee, for hearing us today. Appreciate you uh, listening to us. Once again, my name is John Bruce. I'm a resident of Medford, Oregon. Um, I'm married to my wife, uh, Lisa, who's a CPA down there, and a former president of the Southern Oregon um, CPA Association. I have two children. I'm a graduate of Willamette University. I'm a former assistant baseball coach at Willamette University. I have a master's degree in exercise science from the University of Arizona, and I'm a former assistant baseball coach at the University of Arizona. I'm here today to support this bill, SB 916, without any amendments. I have Lyme disease, and many of the tick-borne uh, co-infections that you've heard about <coughs> it as well, probably another five or six <coughs> other diseases in themselves. Bartonella anaplasma, Lickia, and Plomexoa. I've been diagnosed by an MD in California on this. I've been treated by him in his clinic in California originally from the get-go on these. He asked me, why are you coming down here? I said, because I can't get help. And no wonder, he says, I have thousands of people coming down from the Northwest. This isn't a big area that we see. All of these pathogens have been both serologically and clinically, clinically diagnosed, as I said, these diseases, headlined by LD, have critically devastated my health and my livelihood, not to mention the impact on my life and my family. I've coached college and high school baseball for over 38 years. I've chosen a professional and his family on the baseball field outside, kind of the springs and summers in over a dozen states and half a dozen countries. 2008, while coaching the New York Summer Collegiate League that I was infected, however, I will tell you that I was bit numerous times by ticks just growing up in rural southern Oregon, where I ticks all the time, over animals and that kind of thing. And I did, and I was a teenager who had an early uh, rash, as you saw uh, illustrated before. Um, in 2008, while coaching New York Summer League, knowing that New York was the ground zero for Lyme disease, and I was a team doctor with the odds of, of being infected, that they might be about 15 to 20 percent rain. He was an MD. I knew that percentage was way too high, and so I kind of started amoxicillin and the normal protocol then at that time for 10 days. Little did I know at that time that um, the antibiotics for that short period of time was not enough, and if anything, probably made future treatments more difficult. The adjustment, of course morphing by the, by the pathogens themselves and the res resistance to the antibiotics. Over the next 12 to 18 months, uh, uh, for the first, uh, that's the first of the chronic symptoms began to sit in, extreme fatigue, headaches, brain fog. You've heard them all today, everything, 30 to 40 different systems. Uh, sleep disturbances, twitching, never ending headaches, tremors, optic neuritis, neuropathy, seizures, memory loss, cognitive problems, on and on. The latest addition diagnosed this last year by an MD in Memphis called hypercusis. Um, severely se severe sensitivity to sound by ENT doc and Medford referred me to specialist who was at OHSU at the time. She and the clinic, the hearing clinic, have thus uh, since the last year or two moved off of the campus of OHSU. <coughs> we need to move on. I want to thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Yes, Senator. I'm Jared. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you her name. You wanted names, Dr. Marcia Johnson. She sees Lyme patients all the time. Hypercusis induced by Lyme patients in Portland. Dr. Marcia Johnson.